Coming up ahead in this episode of X Talk Spotlight. We select the, the most suitable um, cell line as well as the most suitable readout to assess a particular um, uh, drug's potency. We need to make sure that it is mode of action reflective. However, at the same time, we, we balance that with sort of simplicity um, that is required to make a good potency assay. You do need to start early and it is important because the more data you gather, the more opportunity you to have to have the right robustness in your assay, the right throughput of your assay, um, and then also the, the best design for that assay. Hello and welcome to X Talk Spotlight, illuminating insights from subject matter experts and industry thought leaders. I'm Sonia Hunt. In this episode, we're asking the question, how can potency assays ensure more successful clinical and commercial outcomes? Developing and validating potency assays is a critical step in biopharmaceutical drug development. The data that potency assays generate measures a drug candidate's biological activity compared to a reference standard, serving as a crucial indicator of a product's quality and potential downstream success in the clinic. By addressing challenges, such as high variability, complex mechanisms of action, and stringent regulatory requirements, potency assays ensure functional integrity and batch consistency from early research to final product release, key information that could hinder a program's advancement if overlooked. In this XTalk Spotlight edition, I sat down with two experts from Abzina, Dr. Erica Kovach, Senior Director of Bioassay, and Rekha Patel, Global Vice President of Analytical Services. Together, we discuss the key attributes of a successful potency assay, how regulators view potency assay data, and more. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Rekha. I really appreciate you taking the time for the Spotlight interview. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, looking forward to this discussion, Vera. So, Erica, to start us off, can you tell us about the role that potency assays play in drug development? Sure. So potency assays uh, practically measure the functionality of a test molecule. So that um, involves any type of drugs uh, being under development, uh, biologics, ADCs, um, and, and, the, and the like. Uh, throughout the drug development process, even from the very beginning, where we're um, assessing uh, particular candidates and leads uh, for um, as, as becoming drugs, it is really important that we are able to measure that functionality, how that uh, drug works and how that's impacting the cells, um, which is basically their potency, uh, how likely they are going to be um, uh, functioning as a drug in the end. So these are these are potency assays and as, as I mentioned, we use that throughout the drug uh, development process. In the uh, beginning, we can use them for for um, sort of screening and assessing the best uh, lead. And they become really important and center stage um, once the lead is selected. Uh, because at that stage, we need to use very robust uh, potency assays, which we will describe a bit um, in the later on during the interview, uh, what makes a good potency assay in order to assess um, their functional, um, out, their functional um, performance uh, throughout the, the drug development cycle. So what that means is that when we produce uh, different batches of the drugs, we need to be sure that they uh, perform just like uh, they expect that, that they are expected, similar to the reference standard or the previous batch that we have uh, produced. And that way we can ensure that uh, the drugs that we give to patients um, will be similarly effective, safe, and um, and, and perform the, the outcome that we, we predict them to, to do. And Rekha, at what stages should potency assays be used? And what challenges do they address at each stage? The potency assays really should start being developed and used as early in the development cycle as possible. Um, preferably, as soon as you come out of your IND, you're, you're developing your assay. 
Um, and the reason why is you will have to have a potency assay for the reasons that Erica mentioned, how critical they are to the CMC strategy um, and how and how powerful they are in, in understanding the effectiveness of that drug on, on any living system. So in order to um, have that assay ready by the time you file your BLA um, and having a robust assay that gives you the best throughput, um, you do need to start early. And it is important because the more data you gather, the more opportunity you to have to have the right robustness in your assay, the right throughput of your assay, um, and then also the, the best design for that assay. Um, the data also exp um, allows you to um, understand what are the right criteria for that assay. Um, and that way you don't end up um, shortchanging your time. If you wait till phase three, which can happen sometimes, um, it is very um, difficult to get an assay ready for your BLA and you do not want to uh, delay that BLA filing. Um, it is a very... Um, unique assay in the fact that the way, because we're working with living cells, uh, the way um, the assay performs isn't always as consistent as you would um, find on a biophysical um, assay. So again, uh, starting as early as possible, even if you don't have the need to have a GMP assay, but having a characterization assay is important. And, and again, you're using this in your CMC strategy for release, uh, for stability, and also for characterization. Um, and that could be various characterization studies um, that are very important to the um, filing of your um, molecules. So, um, a, you know, phase two at the latest would be best, um, but everybody should be thinking about that. Now, Erica, could you tell us about the key attributes of a successful potency assay? As Rekha mentioned, the, the potency assay is probably the most complex assay uh, out of the, the release methods uh, used uh, throughout the, the drug development. And that is because it is a cell-based assay, so it, there's lots of biology involved and inherent variability. Uh, so what is key is that from the very early on, we we select the, the most suitable um, cell line as well as the most suitable readout to assess a particular um, uh, drug's potency. So that includes uh, thinking about um, aspects such as uh, mode of action. We need to make sure that it is mode of action reflective. However, at the same time, we, we balance that with sort of simplicity um, that is required to make a good potency assay. Um, and we need that simplicity because it has to be highly robust, reproducible. It has to reach a very high level of accuracy and precision. Um, it also needs to be sensitive. So the, the, the bigger the assay window, the better chances you have of, of being able to have that assay um, perform to the standard that you need for qualification and validation um, to make it a, a lot release assay. And then um, maybe one other thing that I would like to add is that um, that's always something that we really focus on here in my team. Um, we tend to work on lots of programs from very early stages on uh, all the way with clients to throughout the the drug development process. So by the time we get to the point where we need to design a potency assay, um, we really get to know that molecule um, well. We really understand how it works. So we are in a in a very good position to to be able to design uh, the most suitable assay that is most likely to uh, pass these um, strict um, validation and and qualification criteria. And to wrap up. How do the regulators view potency assay data? The regulators do find the potency assay data to be one of the most critical assays, again, in your release and stability panel. Uh, for the same reasons that Erica mentioned, consistency of your batch, making sure the, the drug is um, effective um, is, is so critical for the, the final strategy of any, any drug. Um, and I think uh, with Abzina, we 
work with a lot of bio conjugates. Um, and so it's even more challenging um, having um, potency assays for these uh, new modality bioconjugates that are coming out. Um, and so having the right amount of time to give yourself to right, to have the right robustness around your assay is critical. The regulators will look at your assay to make sure that you've done your full due diligence uh, on the assays. And so um, even if there is some robustness, you know, gaps, um, did we do the due diligence to make sure that that's justifiable? Um, and those kind of things have to be looked at. So again, you know, with Abzina working um, with a lot of new types of modalities, especially in the bioconjugate space, uh, we really um, have to work even more diligently around these assays and, and making sure that the data we have is leading us down the right road. Um, and this is what the FDA and the, any regulatory agency will appreciate um, for your CMC strategy. Well, thank you very much, Rekha and Erica, for speaking with us today. We really appreciate your time and insights. Uh, many thanks to Xtalks and Uvera for a really nice opportunity to discuss this topic. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much for the opportunity to discuss this uh, very important topic with you. Thank you. We look forward to learning more about Abzina's work in bioassays. Thank you all for joining us for this X Talk Spotlight feature. We hope you enjoyed the discussion.